I'm going to learn one of two things. Either I'm going to learn to move forward with this and continue, or I'm going to learn that this may be a not yet. Mm -hmm. God may only want me to go this far with this particular idea, or he may be teaching me this ain't it at all. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's going to be spiritual formation um, through it, no matter what. And yeah. that is, that's the priority. The mm -hmm. priority is what I'm going to take from it. How am I going to grow more than whether or not I even get the idea done? Hello, my love, and welcome to another episode of the Faith-Based Storyteller Show, where we sharpen and encourage one another in Christ. I'm your host, Michaela Robertson, and thank you for joining me for another day, another week, and another Testimony Tuesday, where we're going to dive into one amazing Faith-Based Storyteller's testimony. I want to introduce you guys today to Joycelyn Lewis. Now, she is a God girl. She is also a God ideas girl, which I resonate with so deeply, and this conversation is so impactful because it's really navigating your God ideas versus your ideas. And so let me read Joycelyn's official bio for you. Joycelyn Lewis is a wife, mom, grandmother, minister, author, podcaster, life coach, and spiritual director. She ignites others through helping them overcome obstacles, and she helps you to clarify your purpose, declare your worth, and embrace your unique strength and the strength and resilience that God has given you. Without further ado, I cannot wait for you guys to hear our conversation. So here is my friend, Joycelyn Lewis. Welcome to the show, Joycelyn. Uh, thanks for having me. I am I'm glad so, to be here. Yes, I'm, I'm glad that you're here. I'm excited to have you on the show. Uh, I'm also excited to dive deeper into your story. But before mm. we get there, I would love for you to introduce yourself and tell the people who you are and what God has gifted you to do. Well, I am um, I am a treasured woman of God. That's one of the things that um, God has really been impressing upon me is to stop uh, describing myself based really on my role, but mm. based on who I am in him. So that's how I would introduce myself in this season as I am a treasured one. Mm. Now, I do um, have some gifts like I preach, I teach, I'm a spiritual director. Um, I'm very apostolic, meaning that I love to help start ministries, start organizations. Um, I'm an idea girl. I'm the one who, if you need an idea, come and see me. I can uh, flesh out an idea and tell you how to get it done. Uh, sometimes in a matter of minutes, it's just the way God has gifted me. Um, I am a wife of 34 years. I've been married for 34 years. I have two right. grown. I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have two grandchildren, two grown children. Let me say that first. I have two grown children, um, 31 and 29, and we are raising our grandchildren, uh, okay. our daughter's children who are nine and five. Um, and currently, you know, I'm a life coach. Um, right now in this season, uh, God really has me offering spiritual direction. And so that's where my my biggest focus is, is providing space uh, where people can hear God's voice and discern what God is um, leading them to do in the season of their life. So, yeah. Ooh, okay. So I'm excited for this because, Joyce, you are a woman after my own heart. So <laughs> you are an ideas girl. I am an ideas girl. But what I love is that you talked about how you are a spiritual director and you're helping mm -hmm. people find direction. Now, mm -hmm. as an ideas girl, um, I know that it's easy for me to come up with other ideas for other people. Someone has literally told me that it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. And I appreciate that the Holy Spirit is working through me. But I'm mm -hmm. curious for you being an ideas girl, do you have that same ability to come up with ideas for yourself? Because I struggle with that, coming up with ideas. Mm. For my, I, I need a me to be me for, <laughs> for me. So I'm curious if you have that same struggle. I got that. Um, not not really for myself. My biggest okay. problem is I have so many ideas for myself that I don't ever know which ones to start with. Ooh. That's probably my issue. It's like I have a, like God gives me all these ideas and then I'm like, OK, God, well, which which one am I supposed to do <laughs> now? 
I'm like you, though. What I would love to have are partners mm -hmm. so that when these ideas show up, that I can partner with someone to do it. Sometimes I have lots of ideas that I know aren't even for me. They're mm -hmm. for somebody else that if I could just um, hand, them, hand them off. But for me, most, no, I, I can get those ideas for me. Sometimes a lot <laughs> of ideas. So I can imagine that it is a struggle. Um, oh, I see the spiritual director in me wants to ask you lots of questions. Ooh, to get into. Way. We're interviewing each other. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. So, you know, so when you say that you, you know, you get ideas for other people, mm -hmm. but you don't feel like you have good ideas for me, let's, exp I would love to explore that. So talk to me about, about that. Like, so it's we so funny how mm -hmm. your response I realize that I need to self-correct because it's not that I don't get ideas for myself. It's that I get so many ideas that I need someone to give me an idea to decipher or discern which idea I need to follow because it, there's so many. And yes. I'm like, OK, actually, I have to correct myself because that's exactly what happens to me. <laughs> Yes. And I get paralyzed yes. because I'm like, well, I don't know which one to start with. So yes. I'm just going to wait to hear from the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. wait for the Lord to tell me. But then, you know, three, four years come by and you're like, I I wrote that idea like in my journal in 2017 and I'm just now doing it in 2024. Got it. Yes. Oh, I get that. Well, I would say for me, I have come to believe that um, there are no... Uh, wrong ideas, no right ideas as far as season. So I feel like if I have a list of 20 ideas, mm -hmm. uh, none of, for me to start on one of them is not going to be a wrong time. Okay. I, I, I don't, I don't say which one is the best one. Okay. Okay. Cause I think sometimes we can get paralyzed by that because we're, if you're like me, probably if you're an ideas girl, you might have a little perfectionism mm -hmm. as an issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I, I tend to, of course, I want, you know, you want to say like, which one is the best idea mm -hmm. so that I can do the best thing or the right thing, right? I've come to discover that there's no best idea. Mm. It's just an experiment. So you know, if I had a list of 20 things and I choose one, then I'm going to ask God to help me with that one. Because my assumption is I'm already praying. Those mm -hmm. ideas have been given to me by God. Yeah. So I don't have to discern whether they're from God. Yeah. That's I'm taken care of. I just need to discern maybe which one I'm going to start with. And sometimes it's just picking one. Okay. It's not even like, okay, God, you know, which one's best? Because then we're waiting for confirmation mm -hmm. and then we're the brick to fall out of the sky. Yep. Then we're waiting for somebody <laughs> on the, you know, while we're standing in the grocery store, we really want them to turn around and be like, you know, that idea you're thinking about, yep. girl, what you should do. <laughs> we're waiting on that. Okay. But God I'm is like, I I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm only saying it because it's me. It's mm -hmm. me. I'm like, would somebody please that is complete stranger, yes. tell me that this is the right one. I've been down that road, okay? Yes. And so I'm learning, though, to just say, okay, this is it. Try it. Mm -hmm. It's an experiment. I'm going to learn one of two things. Either I'm going to learn to move forward with this and continue, or I'm going to learn that this may be a not yet. Mm -hmm. God may only want me to go this far with this particular idea, or he may be teaching me this ain't it at all, mm -hmm. right? And so there's going to be spiritual formation um, through it, no matter what. And yeah. that is, that's the priority. The mm -hmm. priority is what I'm going to take from it. How am I going to grow more than whether or not I even get the idea done? Oh, that's good. So I've realized like personally, that the last 10 years of my life have been a journey back to self because mm. I embarked on a God idea. Mm. I did it to the fullest. Mm. I got discouraged. Mm. I let the idea go. I got distracted. I focused on something else. I built a career in a whole nother area. I wow. came back to podcasting 
or the Lord brought me back to podcasting. I mm-hmm. built a whole career in podcasting. And now I'm in this weird transition period where the Lord has taken me back to the original God idea, but it looks a lot different. Yeah. So I feel like it's been a journey back to self. Mm. How have your ideas navigated your journey in life? Oh my gosh. It's kind of interesting. Like, that's such a great question. I was just, because I've been in that same, but I think that is the journey of all believers really is a journey to self, right? We're all journeying to discover who we most deeply are, Mm -hmm. as well as discovering where we are most at home Mm -hmm. with who we are, right? And so I, I was just thinking, I, you know, I don't, I hope this is the answer to answering the question. So I was just looking through some newsletters that I had started. Um, oh my gosh, like I'm 57. Mm-hmm. So 30 years ago, probably, or yes, easily. And I'm like looking at um, these newsletters because what God has been really percolating in my spirit and my soul is getting back to writing. Mm. That's who I, I believe that is who at the core of me, I'm a writer and I can go back to when I was a little girl, always writing in a journal. Mm -hmm. Um, I can recall always telling somebody I'm going to write a book and they're Mm -hmm. looking at me like I'm crazy. And, but I have gotten off the path of that. Right. Because and I think it happens like I think when we get off the path of even where uh, maybe of who we most deeply are, again, it's all spiritually forming. Right. Mm -hmm. I think in some ways, in some ways, what it does is it helps to clarify the purpose Mm -hmm. by helping us to no longer long for what we may have been longing for while we were actually doing what we're supposed to be doing. Does that make sense? It does make sense. You know what I mean? So, you know, I get off the path of writing. So I am I am a woman in ministry and I have been in a lot of traditional churches that do not accept that and allow that. And so I have longed to work in the local church because another thing that I do is church growth consulting. I love to, well, that's an area I would love to get into, right? And so I just recently started my dream job last year. Well, let me, let me preface this. I am no longer working there and I'm going to tell you why. I started my dream job of being a discipleship and missions minister at a local church here. Like it was, I read the job description and it was me. Do you hear me? It's like they wrote, like my eyes watered when I, when I read it. We had never even been to that church, but I applied I got the job and I'm telling you, I felt like I was in my sweet spot. Oh my gosh, this was the best job ever, right? Yep. And then I discovered it was a toxic environment. Mm. Leadership was doing some stuff towards me, right? To hinder me while I was there. Mm. That's a whole nother podcast we could be on, girl, just talking about that, okay? And so I had to ultimately resign. Okay. I gave up $65,000 a year because okay. I refuse to be in a toxic work environment. And that's a point in and of itself. Sometimes we got to leave places, you guys. Like we can't stay in places that are not healthy. But my whole point is, is that and after I did that, I wrote a blog. And I was really just writing the story I was writing because I've got a big family. I thought if I write this blog, I can send it to them and let them know what happened. And they don't have to tell 30 people what happened. Yeah. Someone from the church shared the blog. I had like over a thousand people view. Right. But that also stirred up my writing in me again. Like, oh, yes, that's. Mm -hmm. So I guess in answer to your question, I think there is this journey of where there's who we most deeply are like me. I feel like I am most deeply a writer. That's where God really is inviting me to join him in ministry. And it's also, I just heard the most, the best um, quote. It's also the playground by which me and God create together. Isn't oh. that the most beautiful picture? Yes. I didn't come up with that. That was <laughs> someone else. Um, 
But anyway, so I left it and now I'm returning. And mm-hmm. I think leaving, I think that this life and this walk is in some ways about leaving and returning to things. Absolutely. You know, so I don't know. Did I answer your question? You did. I had so many things that went on that was going you on did. in my head over that. When I was like, yeah, like when I did this, I have other things I could share, but that, that, that probably the writing of the blog, people were sending me emails and texts and saying, oh my gosh, what you wrote. And then I wrote some other articles about being healthy in church. And, and I just wrote some other things and people really confirmed it. And I said, this is, this is where my sweet spot has been. Mm-hmm. Not that I don't still have a longing. I still kind of have that longing to work in the local church, but I'm waking up every morning saying, what are you going to write today, Joyce one? Yeah. And on that, top of that, you are writing to the local church because the church is the body of Christ and it goes beyond those four walls. Come so, on now. So you're, you're you're reaching the church by being yes. obedient in the gifts that God has given you. Yes, that's good. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Now mm-hmm. I'm curious because as an ideas girl myself, um, I was talking to a friend of mine because like you, when people come to me and they tell me their story, I mm. immediately have a, I, li- I literally see a vision of mm. what could be for them in business, mm-hmm. ministry, in anything. And I see the vision and I share the vision. And for years, I have thought that this was, oh, I just get good ideas. <laughs> I just, I don't know why. I just I have good ideas. I don't know what it is. And a friend of mine brought to my attention. She was like, who gives you those ideas? Mm-hmm. Because I'm always asking God, hey, can you give me a, a gift that I can give to others? Can you please bless me with the one of the spiritual gifts? Is, is it evangelism? Is it teaching? Like, what yes. is it? And the friend was like, literally, the Holy Spirit speaks through you because these ideas resonate with that person. And yes. so I am curious, as an ideas girl, how do you discern your mm-hmm. ideas from the Holy Spirit ideas that God gives you for others? Mm, that is so good. Hmm. I I really I think I assume that it's from God. I don't I think it maybe the way it comes, like there's an excitement that shows up in me, almost like Mary and Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. When Elizabeth was pregnant and Mary was pregnant and Mary goes and she says, and then there's something that leaked on the inside. Yeah, did the baby leap? John leaped on in her belly. Yeah. You know, you know, and so I I think there's something that happens on the inside of me that makes me say, like, ooh, this this should be shared. And and sometimes I don't even think I don't I don't guess I really think like, oh, did God give me this or should I share this or not share this? Um If the idea comes, I generally share it. Okay. I generally don't withhold it, which is different from like if I'm talking about somebody's life, but if it's an idea mm-hmm. and somebody's... Now, I admit, there have been times like this just over the weekend. I had a friend who called me and she's got a book. She's mm-hmm. got the most incredible story. Um, and she, I'm like giving her all these ideas, you know, and I admit, when I hung up, I thought, oh, did I do, like, idea overload with her? <laughs> mm-hmm. That happens. <laughs> you know, like, oh, gosh, like, did I over just, you know. But I think that's the enemy trying to squelch me from using those gifts. And I, I've discovered that, you know, you have a gift of um, the word of knowledge, right, mm-hmm. where God gives us things. The heart, and you probably can attest to this like you don't know where they show like they show up and you're like oh my gosh like what is that what yep. is that absolutely and then you know and and you don't want to feel like you're like this know-it-all like you're trying to mm-hmm. the enemy will be like don't be saying that girl because it's like you think you know it all mm-hmm. and then you be like but I'm gonna tell her you know and you've got you're going back and forth but it's like it's it's so much bigger than me Mm-hmm. So I guess I don't really, I don't really, I usually, if if I'm talking to someone and they're sharing something with me or um, I usually share it. Now I will say this, I guess, because what I, 
relationship, right? So if it's somebody that maybe I just met and I don't really know them that well, and I'm, it takes a, maybe I am praying into that while I'm having that conversation, like, okay, Lord, I see this, I hear this, should I share this? But I would say probably for me, 90% of the time, I'm going to share it. If if it shows up, I feel like God's given it to me and they can receive it. What I don't do is I don't share it with an expectation of reception. Got it. Yep. Same. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I give it and I don't. I don't own any. And that's what I tell people all the time. I don't own my ideas. These ideas don't come from me. You can take it. You can leave it. You can, you know, they're not, they're not mine. It's bigger than me. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think one of the things that I preface conversations with, even with people I know, I'm like, okay, look, so I have an idea. <laughs> I want you to take what you need and leave what you don't. <laughs> that's right. Take what you yeah. need and leave what you don't. Yeah. It's same. It's the same when someone gives a prophetic word. Right. Yeah. You know, like they, you know, it's so important to ask for permission, like, hey, yeah. and that's the other thing. Now, I will start with that. Like, hey, you want me to share some ideas? I don't all the time do it, but sometimes I will say, like, I got some ideas. You want to hear them? And that kind of gives them. That's why probably with this friend, I was like, oh, God, do idea over like because I didn't ask her permission to share them all. But but we have the kind of relationship that she knows she had no business sharing it with me, girl, because I was. She knew God was gonna start giving me. Yes, yep. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me if you don't want to know. <laughs> I understand. My friends be looking at me sideways on calls because they be like, "I want to hear what Michaela has to say," because I know she got ideas, and I'm like, "Okay, first off, I was just here to listen." Okay. But yes, I do have ideas. So here's what. <laughs> yes, here's what but, I was thinking, but yes. But let's talk about that. Even like, do you tend to, are you a quiet soul in a space? Like, are you introverted? You know, what's interesting. I am now introverted, but growing okay. up, I was extremely extroverted. And I think mm. it had more to do with the, the, the need for attention. So mm. it was like, I was always the good girl. I got good grades. I was a leader. I was mm. in all the activities, president of this, secretary of this. And yes. it was like, Hey, look at me now that mm. I have matured in Christ and I know who I am and I understand my identity it's not necessarily about look at me it's just about mm -hmm. hey here's what he's saying look yes. at him you may like yes. even this year the Lord gave me a very interesting word that I am trying to fulfill and work out but he mm -hmm. told me you will be heard not seen and so mm -hmm. that even goes into this lane of hey now it's no longer about creating a bunch of content where you see my face it's about creating content where you hear me speak about the word of God and so that alone has been a journey in itself. Um, yes. And he has blessed with podcast episodes like this, like yes. you commented on my post and booked a call. And so did 18 other people in, in literally a few hours. So between yesterday and Monday, within not even a week, I have 18 interviews and That's there are amazing. still more people responding to that post and filling out the form. So there's another 18 that I got to find time to schedule. And I'm like, That's wow, Lord. You really did mean heard, not seen. Yes. So I guess to answer your question, like for me, it's just, I'm not an introvert, but I am, I'm not an introvert. I'm not an extrovert. Is there an, mm. is there another one? Is there an omnivert? Is there a something vert? There's an ambivert. Yes. Where you're kind of both. <laughs> it's where you're a little bit, you know, you're a mixture between the, extrovert which and it's really where you get your energy like do you get your energy more from being by yourself kind of recharging alone or do you need people to recharge i need people to recharge this charges okay. me. like i love okay. being in rooms with people okay. I, need to live, I live in the city i need people around me gotcha gotcha yeah. i'm very introverted okay so, but I love this type of thing. Like, I love conversations, like, but it needs to be deep. I don't like anything superficial. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about the weather. You know, we can. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. Yeah. Let's have, let's have something that's going to, you know, that's going to challenge me or give me a new perspective. That's what I like. So I love, I love that. I was asking just because I think that sometimes those of us who are, well, I believe idea people, there's a quietness. Mm. that we lean into mm -hmm. 
because we can't get the ideas. And it's not like it's a conscious thing. Like we're not, like, oh, let's be quiet so I can get, there's just, I think there's a quietness um, that we lean into because we, uh, we hear. Yeah. Do you, you know? And so I was just wondering, I think extroverts can have it as well, but I was just wondering, cause I'm a very, I'm quiet. And I think some people, get a little nervous around quiet people because we don't, you know, we're not easily sharing what we think, but yeah. I've just, I'm learning more and more to guard my words. Um, <laughs> And uh, one of my mentors told me a long time ago, the closer you become, the more intimate you become with God, the quieter you become. Absolutely. And that aligns with the word. It says, you know, be quick to listen and slow to speak. So. Yeah. And I've not always been that way. My mm -hmm. kids would probably say, oh, no, mom, that's not that. Uh -uh. But I'm trying to do better as far as just being still and really listening. But I do think that because I'm an ideas girl, I have that gifting and it's and it's really an apostolic gift, you okay. know, because God is bringing those ideas to us to help um, begin new things. Yeah. Right. A lot of times it's beginning new things. So anyway, I, I was just wondering, just wondering about that. I want to shift gears because mm -hmm. you being an ideas girl, you've also had ideas for yourself and you have created various platforms for yourself. And so I want to talk about your multiple platforms. Um, <laughs> Joycelyn Ignites mm -hmm. is how you share not just the words that God has given you, but the ideas that he places in your heart. And you do this through your blog, you do this through your website, you do this through speaking, you do this through your podcast. Mm -hmm. Before we dive into um, what led you to create these platforms, I am mm -hmm. curious, why Ignites? Ooh. Why Ignites? That's a great question. Um, I believe because, so... My husband and I, we lived in Kentucky in 2020. We moved because of COVID and all that. He got a new job. We ended up moving to, we live in Huntsville now. Okay. And so um, when we moved, like I'm, I'm to get to like when Joyce Lynn Ignite started, I was working with a brand with someone who, bless you, who does branding. Mm -hmm. And... I was really um, praying into impact, mm. right? And one of the one of the things that I really feel called to do is to empower women to blaze their trail. Okay, right. I want them to blaze their trail because I'm a min woman in ministry who's had a had a difficult time, which all women in ministry really do when it comes to being in traditional settings. And so Ignite comes from me wanting to ignite women to blaze their trail so that they too will ignite their own trail mm. and then they blaze a trail for others. So that's how um, Ignite came because my I had a I started my I've had several names for my podcast. And this is the other thing I've learned not to be afraid of changing up. I see that I'm an ideas girl and I'm not scared mm -hmm. to change it. Like right. some people, now I can't say that the enemy's not trying to, you know, be like, oh, you didn't change that two or three times or whatever. But I believe it's like trying on a shoe. Mm. You're trying to get to the one that's the most comfortable, the one that you can wear every day, mm -hmm. the one that, you know, doesn't hurt your, your little toe. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're trying to get to that. And so I started with Ignite Your Power. Okay. That's That was my first one. And then I've since I've changed it a couple of times, but the one the, the Joyce Lynn Ignites is what I really just changed it to this year because I fasted in December and uh, part of January. And I was like, OK, um, I had Ignite Her Way because I wanted to speak to women. But then it was still a little too confining because I'm an ideas girl. Right. So, you know, I got ideas that are not just yep. for women. Right. Yep. And I love church growth. I have all these ideas. And so then it's like, well, just do Joycelyn Ignites. Mm -hmm. And I'm like thinking, because, you know, the first thing you think is like, who are you? You just Joycelyn. 
what? Why are you using your name? Because, you know, usually you think somebody who's quote unquote super famous is using their name. But it's like everything, all of my handles are joyfully ignite. And that's what I learned from my uh, Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter threads. It's all Joycelyn Ignites. And when I, I know the whole time, listen, when I chose jo Joycelyn Ignites for the podcast, it was like finding that shoe mm -hmm. that you could put your foot in and you like, this is my everyday shoe. Everywhere I go, I can put your shoe in, put my foot in here and it feels so good. That's home for me. So. Anyway. And I think with the shoe analogy, it also goes with the sizing. Like when we first start, we 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 wear a different shoe size. But by the time we reach a certain age, it's pretty standard for the rest it's of true. our lives. So like <laughs> that Joycelyn Ignites is like your forever shoe size. I understand. Yes. Yes. I I it's yeah. I mean, it just feels it feels like home. Just I like love home. it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what ignited your desire to launch a podcast? write blogs like what ignited this is this something mm. that was uh in you since childhood is this something that evolved over time like what was mm. that spark that lit the yes. writing my whole life mm -hmm. I've been a writer matter of fact I just pulled out a little a short story I wrote when I was in high school oh. you know I was going through some things I was like oh wow I got an A on it <laughs> um, I was just look like that. But so I know writing has been something that has always been a part of my life. I was looking, I was telling you, I, I was looking at a newsletter that I did about 30 years ago. It was called Chat, Changing Hearts, Actions and Thinking. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at that. And so I know the writing's always been there. I've always been ignited to write. I've always written uh, with journals just to get my, my feelings out for lack of, you know, for lack of a better word. That's what uh, I was do as a kid. I was I wrote poetry. I've written poems. Um, I've written songs, had them set to music. Uh, so writing is something that I have has always been a part of me. I believe that I'm called to be one of God's scribes. That's one of the things I'm realizing. Like, okay, girl, you you the scribe and going to just roll with that. So you. the podcasting idea though, that's was out of my wheelhouse <laughs> initially. Okay, And so what got me into podcasting was um, I, when we moved here, I was working on my life coaching business and I was, um, I guess in some ways, not getting the traction I wanted, for lack of a better word, even though I had a few clients, but I, I don't know, I was just not getting the traction and I was feeling really um, maybe a little sad, discouraged around just not being able to share my ideas mm. and to empower people, as well as because we moved, I was disconnected from people and relationships. And so I'm like, I need to have conversations with people. How could I do that? And I just had this idea, like, we'll do a podcast and then you can have conversations with people, and especially with women and mm -hmm. um and I didn't want to do it video because video requires a lot of, I got my makeup on, I got to make sure I look okay. It's so like, it, I got bogged down in that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, if you do a podcast, you can do it with audio and nobody ever has to see you. They just have to hear you. Yep. And that's how um, the podcast was ignited. And what was funny was my very, very first podcast, well, that I had a guest on, she wasn't even supposed to be a guest. She was my daughter's friend. Um, and I said, hey, I want to start this podcast. And I kind of just need to have someone uh, talk with me so I can learn how to edit and all this. And so we met on, you know, on Zoom and it turned out so good. We were like, I'm like, can I use that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I did. And um and so I've just been I've just been doing it really maybe starting out just to be able to connect and to be able to also the other thing about the podcast that I really, really wanted to do was to lift other women's voices. Yeah. Right. Especially who don't get those opportunities, especially like new authors, new um, business owners, so that really in some ways they would have an opportunity to practice mm -hmm. putting themselves out there. Yeah. So that's how.
that's how I started the podcasting. Yeah. I love to say, don't just create one possibility, create a platform because oh, that'll give good. endless possibilities. So my goodness. Yeah. I that's completely good. agree. Now I am curious uh, as a spiritual director, right? Mm -hmm. How, what is the first step that storytellers or anyone listening can take regarding spiritual direction? Hmm. As far as getting a spiritual director or being in spiritual direction? I'm going to say being in spiritual direction. So in spiritual direction, a spiritual direction is a sacred space where you share your stories okay. about what God is doing in your life in, in a particular season of your life, generally. And so I would say um, if a person was entering into spiritual direction, the first step would be to discern where in your life are you having a struggle hearing God? Mm. Because th that's the purpose of the spiritual director is to help you to discern God's voice in your life, in your present day life. And so, uh, and a lot of times that's based on events, right? Things that are happening in your life. Um, but the other way that that also you can kind of discern like, okay, I'm really struggling with this. is It's when self-spiritual direction doesn't work, which self-spiritual direction is, um, you know, reading, having your quiet time. Uh, you know, you find yourself, you're having your quiet time and you're trying to discern a specific direction, specific um, way that God wants you to go. And the self-spiritual direction is not working. You're not getting a word from scripture. It just, everything seems dry. Uh, the other way is if you're going to like corporate spiritual direction, which is where you go and you listen to sermons and, mm -hmm. you know, at your church, but you're also like, gosh, I still, I'm just not hearing God. It's like my ears are clogged up or my heart is clogged up. And that's when you would go to spiritual direction. Um, but knowing where, kind of where you're stuck, that's the best place to start. Like when you come in and you just kind of at least know a little bit of where you are to start. Now, I will say this, some of my directees that I've had, um, they they don't know until they, literally until they show up into that space, um, what the specifics will be that they will talk about. But okay. they kind of have a general idea, like, of, like there's just something missing. So that's okay. I was curious because when I was reading your bio and I'm like spiritual director, mm -hmm. what is the difference between a spiritual director and like a prophetic coach? Mm. Well, I'm not a prophetic coach, so I don't know what prophetic coaches do, okay. but um, a spiritual director is someone who comes alongside someone and listens to them share the various situations, circumstances in their lives, and they ask questions. They may ask questions about um, where they see God. Uh, they may offer insights about what they see. Um, they may share scripture. They may give um, spiritual disciplines as a way to uh, kind of help someone become more sensitive to the leading and the warnings and the promptings of the spirit. Okay. Uh, but we don't really, I would say maybe prophetic to me would be someone is probably speaking into that person's life, sharing those visions of what they Got see. It. I'm not a coach, so I don't know, but I'm assuming with using the word prophetic spiritual, we don't do that as spiritual directors. Our role is to help the person hear God for themselves, that we don't become the voice, that they hear the voice. Got it. Okay. So what I'm saying, just from personal experience, the prophetic yeah. coach is exactly what you said. They receive the vision and the, the direction from the Lord, but then they become the spiritual director that gives you the scripture and the resources and the support, but they're sharing what the Lord has seen for your life. And then uh -huh. they're helping you with the spiritual direction on that path. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Because I haven't ever gone to a prophetic. I have thought about it, though, but I'm a little nervous with the prophetic sometimes. So, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I, you know, you really need someone you can trust. 
yes. when you're when you're in that prophetic realm because whoo, it's a whole nother subject. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, praise the Lord that He is. He will. He brought one into my life. I did not have to go seeking. So, praise the Lord for that. Now, I um, I know that we're gonna wrap up here shortly, Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. Joycelyn, where can people find you? Um, they can find me on my website. That's okay. probably the best place um, because um, I kind of have a love hate relationship with social media. Me too. Honestly. You know, and I so www.joycelyn, J O Y C E L Y N Lewis, L E W I S dot com is the best place to reach me. And okay. everything else, again, Facebook is Joycelyn Ignites. Instagram is at Joycelyn Ignites. Threads at Joycelyn Ignites. At Joycelyn Ignites is all of my handles for every social media platform. Okay. Well, in wrapping, um, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, for starters, you're here on the Faith Based Storyteller Show, where as iron sharpens iron, one story sharpens another. So, how are you sharpening the people in your life? Um, through my writing right now in the season, and um, I'm getting ready to create my podcast. I'm getting ready to get back in the studio and create that. But through writing and podcasting right now, that's my. That's the way I'm sharpening and helping to sharpen other people who aren't irons. And I'm also a mentor. I will say that as well. I do mentor. I only take four women a year, um, mm -hmm. but I do mentor um, women. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love it. And to wrap, I'm going to walk you through our story method. Now, you've shared some of your personal story here, but here in the faith-based storyteller community, we have a story method where we identify your strength, technique, obstacles, relationships, and your why. So I'm going to ask you five questions, and I just want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Okay. Don't be nervous. Okay. <laughs> your face is like, oh, gosh. No, oh, no. Lord have mercy. <laughs> don't be nervous. <laughs> All right. So the SNR method is strength. What is mm. one of your biggest strengths? Mm. That I can take um, an idea and create a practical tool that someone can actually use mm. to um, to grow with. Sis, I might have to take that strength. Just letting you know, I might have to. Might have to repurpose that. I'll put, I'll put the quote on the end, but I'll repurpose that for myself, okay? Um, but I love that because that's exactly what I feel like my strength is, but I never put it to words and you just did that for me. So thank you. <laughs> well, when you write it down, could you send it back to me so I can know what I said? Thank when you it very airs, much. You know, I got you. Oh, yeah. got you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> love my it. second question is technique. What has mm. God gifted you to teach? Oh, my goodness. Um, leadership development, um, spiritual formation, you know, how do you grow and become more spiritually mature? I would say that would be the biggest, if I did an umbrella, it would be teaching believers how to become spiritually mature. Mm, I love it. Question number three is your obstacles, but it's also twofold because it's overcome. So what is a recent obstacle that the Lord has allowed you to overcome? Um, mm. I will use, I mean, the thing that is the most prevalent for me right now is in April of last year, which I know it was last year, on April the 8th, Good Friday, mm. I fell and I uh, broke my femur. Oh my God. And I was trying to step over my doggy gate and I fell and I broke my femur and I was home by myself. My husband at the time was actually in the hospital because he had, uh, they thought he'd had heart attack symptoms that Wednesday. So he was in the hospital. My daughter oh my was at a hotel. It was so crazy. Um, so I fell and I laid on the floor for about 60 seconds. And I cried because I knew I broke something, but I didn't know what it was. And I crawled, I had to crawl to the back of my house with a broken femur and get my phone. And I, and wait, before I do have to say this part. While I was laying on the floor, I thought, 
The only way somebody's going to get in here to get to me is they're going to have to break one of my doors down or break out a window. Mm. And I thought, I ain't going to pay for that. <laughs> I'm saying this is what I thought while I'm laying with a broken femur. I'm just telling you, priorities, right? Yep. Now, mind you, my son got mar- was to get married two weeks later in a whole nother state. I wasn't thinking about that. I'm like, I'm not going to let somebody break my window down. I have I to pay, pay for, for this. Uh-huh. I ain't paying for it. Money can be a motivator. I'm just saying. Anyway, <laughs> so I crawled to the back of my house and I had to crawl to the front of my house um, to get to the door. I had to crawl. It was a total of 120 feet is what my husband and I realize and I've had to overcome um PTSD symptoms from the fall Mm -hmm. um the fall actually contributed to me discovering about this toxic work environment that I was working in it actually helped me to see that even more clearly and I did them probably one of the most courageous things that maybe I've ever done, which was to leave that job, was to actually resign. Um, And I've, and in some ways I've had to grieve that, right? I've overcome the grief of that. But I will say that the, the crawling to the back of my house and to the front of my house really showed me who God is and how um, he can be with you. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was so incredible about that moment was I was actually that morning supposed to be going to a prayer meeting with some ladies who ultimately ended up at my house that same morning, all three of them praying over me when the paramedics came. And just so how God in his, his kindness, his grace, had me not be alone. My daughter was here, happened to be here that day. And then when I found myself um, in the ER, those three ladies were there. And and we all didn't really know each other that well. But I remember I was in so much pain, like scale of one to 10, 20 for real, but I was in a lot of pain. And I I kept saying to the ladies, tell me your stories. It's like, tell me... Tell me when your birthday is. Tell me. And I was asking them this because the more I focused on their voices, the more I focused on their voice, the less pain I would feel. Mm. And so my greatest lesson in overcoming obstacles is focusing on the voice. Mm. That, that That was my greatest lesson and i would say that the words that came to me when i was crawling on that floor a friend of mine had said to me a long time ago she said joycelyn you can do hard things yes and that was the voice so focusing on a voice that is encouraging and and the number one voice the shepherd of course which i believe he was using all of them um to help me so i i yeah I hope that answered the question. Oh yes, that was that was for me. Focus on mm. the that was for me. Focus so on that voice. voice. <laughs> um, my final two questions. Number one is mm. the R and R story method is relationship. So, mm. how do you continue mm. to grow in relationship with God? Mm. Um, I create. Some people call it a rule of life. Mm-hmm. Um, I call it a spiritual uh, growth plan, um, which I'm actually finishing up mine. I'm praying into what are the practices and the principles that I'm uh, discerning that God wants to form in me Mm -hmm. for the year. And so um, having a plan, you know, and not just kind of being, you know, willy nilly about it, but really saying like, okay, This is what, you know, I'm going to practice centering prayer every morning. I'm going to, you know, really having a plan that is related to what God wants to form in me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And my final question is your why. Why, Mm -hmm. Joycelyn, do you do what you do? Mm.
I believe it's rooted in, I know that I am deeply loved by God. Like, and I've experienced the length, the length, the width, and the breadth of God's love for me. And I want people to experience that same love. And in many ways, I am being what I didn't have. Mm. I didn't have someone to come alongside me to actually show me the way. I mean, I've had little people along the way, so I'm not saying that nobody. So I guess I don't want to say nobody because I've had people speak life and all of that. But kind of like what you said at the beginning, I need me. I need I need somebody like me to be to help me. Mm -hmm. In some ways, it's that like I, I haven't had a constant person um, who has similar giftings and who really kind of sees, haven't had that. And so I want to be that in someone else's life. So I would say that's, and I think that's the greatest form of love is to, to be a constant, right? To be, and to be able to, see other people's gifts and and I do have an aunt who is who is that way. But there's some other things that I really needed that I didn't have. Yeah. So that, I guess Lord. that's yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well Joyson, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you thank for you. being an igniter. Thank you for allowing God to use you to help others gain spiritual direction yeah. for being an mm -hmm. ideas girl after my own heart. I'm yes, here girl. for it. <laughs> um, thank you so much. I appreciate all of your time and I just appreciate you for being here today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This has been great. I mean, I, what I love, can I just say this? What I love about this podcast moment, this this sacred space we just created is that I don't know you. I've never met you never. before this moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is what God can do. Like when I think about it, my nose burns and my eyes water mm -hmm. because it's the spirit is so real. Yes. And that he can bring two igniters, mm -hmm. right? And we talk like, no one would ever know we met at 11 o'clock. Yep. You know, I love, I love that. And so thank you because I was, I, for me to fill that form out is out of the box for me to do. God, God tapped me. It was like, do that. I was like, okay. All righty, my loves. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. I really hope you enjoyed Joycelyn's story. Like she is a powerhouse and I am so blessed that we were able to connect when we did. I'm so blessed that the God, that God is blessing her um, to be a writer, to really be a scribe for Christ and to share the stories and the testimonies that he gives her to share. If you want to connect with Joycelyn, make sure that you comment or look through the comments or the description box, wherever you are listening to this. If it's on YouTube, it'll be in the comment section. If it's in a podcasting app, it'll be in the description section just to get all of her contact information. All of that's going to be located there. And if you are a faith-based storyteller and you want to join a community of other faith-based storytellers, I invite you to join Faith Audio Network. It is our free community for faith-based storytellers. And so you can learn more and register at faith-based, nope, you can learn more and register at faithaudionetwork.com. That is faithaudionetwork.com. However, if you do want to get that story method, you can visit faithbasedstoryteller.com. All right, I'm giving you guys too much to do, right? So just go join the community. Come join us. We love you. We want, we want to hear your story. We want you to be part of this family. So come on over. But anywho, guys, uh, that concludes this episode of the Faith Based Storyteller Show. I will talk to you later. And until next time, always remember that God loves you and so do I. Bye.